Hi everyone, my name is Ms. Danny. I am a first grade teacher and this is Classroom Setup Day 7. Today's video is going to be a little bit different, but equally exciting, I hope. You're going to help me set up my teaching binder. Before we get started though, I finally finished all of the visuals for my classroom and I would like to share with you how it all turned out. So, we have finished work and unfinished work for the beans that I want kids to put their work. I still have to get two of them from Shein, but we're getting there. Then the next ones are my center's labels. I just made math and ELA because even though we do have um, science and social studies in first grade, I'm still not sure how we're going to do that or how uh, my school plans that for first grade. So I'm, I'm just waiting it out for that one. Then I finally made my voice level setup. And you guys, I gotta say that I had seen the voice levels um, this place in so many classrooms on Instagram and Pinterest and YouTube and I thought that it was super cool but I didn't know what each of those levels meant and at first I didn't consider using them because I thought if I cannot understand really well what makes it be a level one versus a level three or what defines a level two then of course my students would have a difficult time figuring it out as well so at first I thought that I was not going to do the voice levels so then I decided to start looking online and try to inform myself better about it and I came to a very happy place now because I now understand what each of those levels means and I think that the kids will understand them as well. So we have level zero which is complete silence and great for independent work. Level one which is the whisper voice and only one person can speak and this is for the partner activity. Then inside voice, which is talking voice. And this was one of the things that I more or less adapted. Inside voice is group work. So I will tell the children that only the three people around them or the people in their group are able to hear them. Then I decided to modify voice level three because usually what teachers did was to have it be a speaker voice or a presenter voice or something else that I don't remember, but for me, or normal voice. But for me, that was a bit difficult to distinguish, like, like what makes it a speaking voice, but not an inside voice, you know, because you're speaking anyway. So I thought that by writing teacher voice, it would be easier for the kids because teacher voice is the voice that everyone in the class, in the room can hear you. So it's a very loud voice still not screaming but something where everyone can hear you and of course the kids cannot use teacher voice unless they are presenting something or answering to something as a class so I thought that this would be easier for them to understand and once I figured this one out I was actually super super happy and then the last one is outside voice so very loud but not screaming and only just outside the last thing that I laminated was this resource that I purchased from Miss May, the one fab teacher, and it's the unfinished now what setup. And you guys, she's amazing. I've learned so much from her, and I've bought some of her posters to use as books for our classroom library. So whenever I set that one up, I will show you. But basically, she has all of these um, cards that you can put on the wall, so that children, like whenever they leave their finished work they can see it right away and they don't ask you like what do I do now no so if they know for sure that they have finished that there's no more work for them to be done then they have these cards and they can write a story play a literacy game write a letter practice their numbers take a reading test practice handwriting and you know just so so many options that the children can do and that that will prevent the what do I do now question all the time and I think it makes them quite independent and it also gives them some ideas because I remember that my kids sometimes would get bored not knowing what to do with that freedom that they have so this gives them an idea to do it alrighty so that's it for all of my classroom decor laminating posters visuals bulletin board things once I get to my classroom I will show you how everything looks of course and I will give you an in-depth tour but for now we can get started with my teaching planner So just 
switching my camera angle here sorry you can see my tripod but there was no other way to do it um, this is my teaching binder and when you open it you have Miss Daniela's Classroom's Essentials. I have to thank Caroline's Creative Classroom for the majority of this because it was thanks to her 30 page checklist of procedures that I managed to get this part done and also to the book um, the, new, the New Teacher's Complete Source Book by Bonnie P. Murray. Uh, she also has some checklists that were very useful. Mainly Caroline's Creative Classroom. I mean, honestly, she has like so many pages on her free resource about things that you need to plan, things that you need to take into consideration for your centers, your procedures, every procedure that you can think of she has. So basically what I did was to adapt her resource into the template that I already had. And then I developed each of her bullet points into what I wanted for my classroom. So as you can see here, it says weekly files. This is a folder where I will have all of my files and I will be using this folder as opposed to a 10 drawer card because this one you can um, compact and then put it in your backpack once it's empty. So for me, it's much easier. It's much more portable and you know that I'm all about having portable things. So this is where I will have my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday copies, extra copies, copies to make, um, anything else like answer keys and things to file. And then I have what I called my teacher file cabinet, which is this expandable folder. And something that I love about this is that it just doesn't open like an accordion, but you can actually set, set it up open, uh, having all of the tabs. So it's like a portable filing cabinet. And here I will have all of my upcoming lesson plans um, resources that I like, that I downloaded and printed for future lesson plans. Um, anything else that I like that I would like to do for the classroom, I will put here. As well as things from previous weeks that we can still check. So for example, if a student went absent and they need some pages to complete, I will leave that here. And this is to be emptied from past projects at the end of the month and it will have just the future ones. Then I have a description of my student work for an end of year folder. Here I explain how I will be using my binders and also that I will be using my daily slides for daily organization and keeping track of everything. Over here I have a list of my procedures and you guys you don't have to do this but honestly for me compiling all of these really made it super clear in my mind as to the things that I want to do in my classroom and I think that it's much easier to go back year after year to a file like this than feeling that I'm starting over every year, you know, and, and trying to remember, oh, what was it that I was supposed to do um, for this thing or how had I planned it, you know, because so many things happen during the year. You're not going to remember everything and it's much easier to just have it all printed and everything explained so that then you can adjust and maybe make notes like, oh, this worked, this didn't work, etc. Also, these essentials um, work for me as a substitute binder as well. So here I have my procedures and I put some icons with the hand signals that we will be using. My bathroom procedure, my water procedure, the attention getters that I will use for the first two months of school. I will be adding some, maybe one, a new one every month, but I don't want to overwhelm the kids with so many attention getters that then they forget, you know? Um, then, for example, how we're doing our transitions, the line of chance that I want to use, and the classroom jobs, and the hallway hustle. Now, this I took from an amazing resource of classroom visuals that I will also be using in my daily slides to teach the kids about all of the procedures in our classroom. And I will link it down below, and I will talk more about this particular resource um, in another video where I explain my daily slides, but oh my gosh, you guys, these are a godsend. So, well, in any case, there's this acronym about the hallway hustle and how we're supposed to behave in the hallway. Then here I have like everything about students, you know, like how I will manage student work, the washi tape that I will use to color code their notebooks so that it's easier for them to grab. They can just look at the spine and know which one is their English notebook, etc. Then their unfinished work folder, which is the same kind of folder as the one that I will be using, but this is only for the students. And in this folder, this will act as their mailbox. And for me, this is easier than having a bin 
with the mailbox. Here they will put their unfinished work folder and their take home folder. If it's Friday and they have not finished their unfinished work for the week, they will take it home together with their take home folder. So I thought that this would be easier for them and anything that they need will be in here. Then like how we're going to organize the student shelves and their supplies and what bins we're using, the expectations on work, so the name on the page and everything. And then some student info as to who needs support, who are the English language learners, who has piano during recess, who takes the bus and who has allergies. This is all in there. Then I have my classroom management and here, as opposed to the procedures, these are just rules and how we're going to make sure that those rules are being followed. So in here I have a lot of the whole brain teaching that I will be using, so how we're practicing our rules, following directions, how does the scoreboard work, how we redirect when someone is breaking the rules, our practice cards, how we behave with visitors, um, the weekly behavior note that I will send to parents with positive and negative comments, of course, it depends, and our rules. I label this as a teaching page because here it's also whole brain teaching but more about instruction and I'm noticing here that I didn't edit the box but anyway. So we will be using the class yes as an attention getter, the teach okay, the mirrors for them to teach because it's important for them to repeat what you say so that they learn it, hands and eyes, blow your answer in your hand, turn and talk, crisscross applesauce bodies and chairs. This is a whole new system that I will be trying, but honestly, just from reading it, I am super, super excited about it. And then how we come to the whole group carpet, and then how we celebrate our achievements, because I believe that a positive classroom leads to learning and to kindness and to love. We have our one second party, which I took from the one fab teacher, Miss May. The Kiss Your Brain, I also took it from her, and then the Super Improver Wall from Whole Brain Teaching. Then I have a list of sponge activities, and this one I took from the book that I mentioned, the New Teacher's uh, Complete Source Book. And these are just sponge activities that you use whenever you have like those extra minutes where you have to wait for something, wait in line, or for example, if the projector is not turning on or it takes a long time to load the website, uh, the children start to get a little bit restless and you use these activities just to keep their attention. So for example, uh, when I say a number, tell me what comes next. What number comes between these two? Name a list of words that rhyme with this, you know, just things that you should think of. Then I have our morning routine as a class, and this is the expectations that I have of the students once they get to the classroom. So they will arrive, they will greet me, they will unpack uh, their take-home folder, where to put their water bottle, um, and what to do after. I use morning tops. So here's an explanation of how we do that and for how long, then how to take the attendance and uh, the activity that I want to do once we clean up the morning tops and we start our day. I would like to start with a read aloud and like the, a bit of the guided reading process, but I want to do like an interactive read aloud on Mondays. Uh, then shared reading and then reading with a reading strategy or a writing strategy of the week all anchored in the same book that we will be reading every week so every week we have a book this is what I want to do with that book and it's just 10 minutes five minutes it's just as a way to slowly start our day you know then I have what I named my daily groove <laughs> which is how I, I am organizing, for example, the English workshop, the math workshop, the literacy centers, the math centers, um, expectations for working in groups, uh, what I'm doing with the early finishers, my, our desk organization, etc. Then I have lunch and recess, expectations for the first snack and playtime, expectations for the lunch cafeteria and the lunch recess, how we're supposed to behave, and the schedule. Then I have library time. As I said, we have one hour of library time every week, but I wanted to tweak that one together with our handwriting time. And I want to do rotations in both times because I've noticed that it doesn't work if we just ask the children to read for one hour. I mean, they are five or six years old, so of course they will not do that. Um, and I would like to have them focused on something different every 20 minutes. 
and I want to do my guided reading rotations also here. So while I have a group with me, I want the other groups to work on three different things. One will be doing handwriting, one will be doing partner reading or individual reading, and one group will be doing centers. And then they will rotate through that and I will get through all of my guided reading groups during this day. And the reason why I have to do it all or most of it in one day is because our schedule is like that. We don't have the same classes every day. We then our end of day um, procedure, I have the cleanup, our bus boogie, this is also from the classroom visuals that I mentioned, our end of day and dismissal and where we're going to do. I am trying to find a closing circle activity that I like because the ones that I have seen, I have found a little bit boring or I don't know, that it could get a bit uninteresting. So if you guys have a tip, please let me know. And then I want to do Fun Friday. And also, if you have some activities that you've seen that your students like, that you like to do, please let me know because I need some ideas for this. Then I have everything about our supplies, taking care of the supplies, where to find extra supplies, um, the pencil procedure, the lost and found. And here I have some scripts about whole brain teaching. I still need to print some of those um, just so that I can have them at hand. Uh, this is especially useful when introducing something from the whole brain teaching. Well, this is the end of the essentials section, which is everything about my classroom. Compiling this made it so much easier for me because now, like, it took me a while. It took me an entire day to compile all of these and even a bit longer to think about how to do this. But once I have it, uh, my mind is just free. Like, I know what I'm doing and I know how to run my classroom. I made these tabs with the pocket folder using construction paper just because I usually have something that needs to be filed away. Or Here I have my grade book and I left it blank because I need to write the students names and I still don't have my roster. And initially I put the subjects here because I wanted to have one grade book page per subject. But now I think that I will go back to what I was doing and just one page per week. It's much easier to manage for me. I just have a couple of pages here. Then I have my curriculum. And in here, I included this page for long-term planning. And here I have my curriculum. I also edited this file because at my school, we have like a ton of pages per term and I wanted to have it all compiled in as few pages as possible because it's just easier to have everything together um, and to look quickly through it. I mean, my first term here is just in two pages and before it used to be in six or seven so it's just easier to flip this have everything at a glance and plan or at least that's how it works for me so that's what I did so we have first term second term third term and then here I have student info and the reason why I stored these here is because these are this is for the first day of school and I don't want to forget about it or store it away or lose it with all of the other setting things. I need to make sure that I use this. So if I have it here, I will remember. And these for student birthdays, I thought it would be better to keep them here uh, than, to, than to file them away somewhere else. This way it's just easy. If I find out that a student has a birthday, I just write it and give it to them. And my class list. Then our after school system, I have some children that take the bus and some children that their parents pick them up, so I need to have this, their birthdays. And then this is something that I came up with this morning. We have a list of classroom supplies that the children should bring either on Meet the Teacher Day or on the first day of school or throughout the first week of school. And I wanted to keep track of who brings what because it seems to be easy at first, like we just get the supplies with their name and that's it. But then come the first day or the second day, you realize that one kid is missing the glue sticks, one kid is missing one notebook, one, one kid doesn't have the math book, you know? So I thought that it would be easier to have this spreadsheet and to mark the things that the children brought. And then if it's something really important like the books, I can remind the parents specifically about that. And then if throughout the year the children run out of any of this and we need more, I can mark it and send the letter to a specific parent about that. 
So I have two pages for that. Then my lesson plans. I printed a couple of these. These are by the Reflective Educator and Teachers Pay Teachers. And she made this template about the whole brain teaching lesson. And I know this is not necessary. I know it's not necessary to plan your lessons in such a detail. And I know that things don't usually go according to plan. I mean, believe me, last year I took over the second grade class in April. I was literally planning five minutes before the lesson. <laughs> so it came to that point. And that's okay, but I didn't really like that. So I want to make sure now that I have time, at least those lessons that are crucial, you know, that we are introducing a new topic or something about guided, guided reading or a procedure that I have to teach on the first day of school, I want to have it all super detailed in how I'm going to do it. Also, because once you write it down and you read through it, you can also realize, uh, yeah, this is not going to work or we need to make some adjustments, you know? Then we have my monthly section. And in here, I printed a monthly view. I like to have it all at a glance, so I prefer to have it all in one page as opposed to spread out in two pages. And basically, I write everything with pencil because things just change all the time. And I made sure to write all of the things that are important that we already know about our school calendar. So our meet the teacher night and classroom setup day, our work day on Friday, and then the back to school on the 12th of September. And I wrote the times that we were at school just so that I can remember because sometimes they have a different entrance time. And then here in the notes section, what I did was write the theme that I want to use that week. Now, I still have to discuss this with my team teacher, but for example, for the read alouds and for centers and for reading strategies and stuff, I can do my own thing. So I want to use themes to sort of guide my instruction and to make it more fun, you know, and also to help me pick the books that I want to read with them in the read aloud. So I did that and I just filled out like the breaks, the holidays that I know we're going to have, our Christmas break, the last day is a half term. And I already wrote some possible themes that I want to use. There are weeks where I put like three themes because I'm still not sure what I want to do. So that depends on how it goes. And I also want to test it with my students first to know what they're interested in and whether this works or not. And then at the end of this, I made a year at a glance page for the themes. And so basically, I have the weeks here and I just need to refer to that week that I wrote here and the, the theme that I had chosen for that week and what days it comprises. And so I write the week, the theme, the read aloud that I am planning to use, the writing exercise related to that theme, the craft, and the directed drawing that I want to do. These are optional activities. It depends because I am doing this as an extra thing from the curriculum. So it depends how much time we have. But I want to have at least a read aloud as a set thing. If you're wondering, for the first week of school, I am planning to read a letter from your teacher on the first day of school, May's first day, and Mr. Wiggle's book. This is to take care of library books. Then on the second one, I want to read Goodbye Summer and Hello Autumn because our theme, I saw in the curriculum that we will be discussing the seasonal changes, especially about fall. So this would be a perfect book for that. And then Johnny Appleseed. So I just have a couple of pages. I haven't filled them out because again, I'm testing this method. Then I have the weekly view. And this page I laminated because I want to have sticky notes uh, or write it with a washable marker just so that I don't have to reprint this page over and over again. And the weekly lessons. I'm not sure that I will be using this because our school asks us to provide a very specific lesson plan for the week. So maybe I just print that one and not use this. But this one looks prettier though. <laughs> so we will see. Then here I have my parents section. And here are just some possible letters that I want to hand out on the first day of school and on meet the teacher night. I still have to edit these, so I will tell you more about them in my meet the teacher video. 
but I just get them here so that I don't forget. Here I have parent contacts, parent communication for whenever we have a meeting. I want to have some notes and things that I want to say. This might be a running record actually. And that's it. And then I have a tab for meetings because I usually have meetings with my headmistress or with another teacher or with a parent. So I just want to have this here to keep a record of it. And this section says handouts, but I don't have anything so far. But of course, whenever I have like a newsletter that I want to give or some forms that I want the parents to have or anything else that I need, or for example, extra copies for the grade book and everything, I will put in the handout. So that's it, that concludes my teacher binder. So that's it for my teacher binder video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a bit long, but I love watching these videos to get some ideas. There's always something useful that I find in other people's videos. And that's why I wanted to share mine in case you have some ideas and also to ask you for some tips on some sections. Let me know how you make your teacher binder, if you keep one, if you put it together with your lesson plans or with your teacher planner. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in my next one. Bye!